Hello friends, let us start with time domain analysis where we will learn what is meant by time response of the system. We will see what are standard test inputs. Along with that, we will understand what is meant by order of system and type of system. Let us begin. So now we will start with a time response of system. As the name employed, what is meant by time response of the system? We have to see how system is behaving with respect to time. So to understand this, let us take some live example or a practical example. You must have seen how microwave oven works. So let us take an example of a microwave oven. In this oven, before you place a food for a baking purpose, first of all, you set a temperature. So I would say that whatever temperature that you set before you place the food, it is called as a reference temperature. So let us assume the temperature that you set is 140 degree centigrade. because we want our food to get baked at this temperature. So what I'll do is, I'll plot a graph of temperature with respect to time. So on y axis, let us plot a temperature in degrees Celsius. And on x axis, obviously we have time. So since reference temperature is equal to 140 degree centigrade, we want that the temperature which is getting maintained inside the microwave oven should remain 140 degree centigrade throughout all the time till the food is there. So what I want is this kind of response. As you can see, I want the temperature to remain at 140 degree centigrade right from t equal to 0 to the end. Am I right? But then in reality it doesn't happen because even though you have set the temperature to 140 degree centigrade, the moment you turned on the microwave oven, let us assume that instant is at t equal to 0. So try to understand t equal to 0 is an instant when you just turn on the oven. So definitely at t equal to 0, temperature will not be 140 degree centigrade. So slowly, slowly it will start raising. So in reality, it will start from the lower temperature and then slowly, slowly it raises towards 140 degree centigrade. What does that mean is the output is trying to follow input, am I right? And definitely at some given point, it will reach to 140 degree centigrade. I hope you understood this. So we have two type of responses in a single graph. The one response, so this is called as a reference input. And in blue color, this is actual output. Am I right? So as you can see, whatever reference input I have given for a system, the output should follow input but then at a given instant that is at t equal to 0 when the oven was turned on it is not going to follow the output or it is not going to follow the input in fact it is going to take some time but then at the end it will make sure that the temperature will raise to 140 degree centigrade so here what i can do is in blue color what i have plotted is the actual output i can actually divide into two category that is a part of response which is varying with respect to time and a part of response then which remains steady with respect to time. So I would say that at the end it remains steady. So I can actually make two parts inside this. So on the left hand side of the partition we will see that the response is changing with respect to time. We will call that response as a transient response. And as you can see, the response which is 
to the right hand side of the partition is called as a steady state response. So, in general, transient response is denoted as CT of T. The steady state response is denoted as CSS of T. And in general, the whole response, which is actually summation of transient response and steady state response, it is called as C of T. You know that in control system, in fact, C of T is called as a controlled output. So this is called as either controlled output or we can call this response as total response. And to be very precise, we will say it is total time response because it is response seen with respect to temperature. So I would say mathematically, total response or total time response is always equal to transient response plus steady state response. So I can say C of T is always equal to CT of T plus CSS of T. So this relation is very, very important. So what I'll do is, I'll give you some examples from which you have to figure it out, which part is a transient part, which part is a steady state part. So look at the first example. C of T is equal to 10. We will take second example as C of T is equal to e to the power minus 10 t times u of t and third example what i'll take is c of t is equal to 10 plus e to the power minus 10 t dot u of t so let me tell you how to identify it whenever i'm saying transient response it is always time dependent so this response is always time dependent and when I'm saying steady state response, it is always time independent. So let us go for the first example where it says C of T is equal to 10. So when I'm actually going to plot it, it would be always 10 with respect to time. That is, it is in fact independent of time. And since it is independent of time, I would rather say that this 10 is nothing but a steady state. So I would say a steady state part is equal to how much it is 10 then rather i would say there is no transient part or i would say a transient part equal to zero so in this example transient part equal to zero steady state part equal to 10 let us go for the second example as you can see this e to the power minus 10 t dot u of t is time dependent because it is function of time am i right and since it is function of time, I would say this is nothing but a transient part. And looking at the second example, we see that there is no term present in C of T, which is time independent. And therefore, I would say that in the second example, steady state part equal to zero. Look at the third example, where this term is time independent and the remaining term is time dependent and therefore i would say this is nothing but a transient part and obviously this 10 is nothing but a steady state part so looking at c of t one should easily identify what is time dependent and what is time independent the functions or the terms which are time dependent are transient part and the part which is time independent that is generally constant part is considered to be a steady state part let us understand what is meant by now type and order of system to really begin with this type and order of system we should first of all understand we are talking about a closed loop control system where we consider only negative feedback because negative feedback gives you the stability also it gives you lesser noise and therefore we believe in a negative feedback system over a positive feedback system of course, even positive feedback system has got its own applications. Basically, positive feedback systems are used to make oscillators, but all other real time systems, we generally use negative feedback systems. So we believe that we are using a negative feedback system where the feedback element 
is always one that is it will have a unity feedback so first of all type and order systems are applicable to only those systems where h of s is always equal to one that is nothing but unity feedback system why do we prefer unity feedback system very simple see whenever i'm taking feedback i'm basically what is the aim of taking the feedback the aim of taking the feedback is to compare output with the reference value i repeat see in general we draw our closed loop control system this way as you can see here the value of h of s is equal to how much it is 1 so what we give as input this is what we called as a reference input this is what we see as actual output rather we call actual output as controlled output so when we started this video we started with a real time example that is a microwave oven so we used to believe that whatever reference temperature that we give our output should follow the same therefore a system is working very well when reference input and controlled output or actual output are the same but in case if they are not same then it should be every time compared with the help of this summing point so this summing point basically acts as a comparator so this is also called as a comparator what is meant by comparator comparator is a device which is going to compare two things for example for example i'll give you some let's say non-technical example let's say if i want to compare 5 with 2 so when you are comparing 5 with 2 basically you perform a subtraction i repeat whenever you are comparing 5 with 2 you basically perform a subtraction that is if you do 5 minus 2 you get a positive answer that is you can actually subtract 2 from 5 if you are able to subtract 2 from 5, we believe that 5 is greater than 2. Let's say if I'm actually comparing this way, that is I'm comparing 2 with 5. Now if I perform 2 minus 5, we know that we cannot subtract 5 from 2. Therefore, we can say that 2 is lesser than 5. Or if the resultant comes out to be 0 after subtraction, then we believe that both the numbers are equal. That is when I'm comparing 5 with 5, and again i am performing the subtraction i get result equal to zero then we believe that the relation is equal to relation and now whatever i have said even though it appears to be some nonsense example let me tell you this is what the procedure followed by even microprocessor for comparing two numbers so for comparing two numbers microprocessor generally subtracts these numbers and depending upon the flag value it decides the relation that is whether it is greater lesser or equal so my point is our aim is to have actual output and reference input to be same but in reality it may not be same so there should be a system or there should be some element which will actually compare actual output with reference input and to compare this you know what actual output should be taken as it is and should be compared with reference input with the help of summing point but can you see there is a presence of this negative symbol this negative symbol basically going to subtract the reference input and a controlled output and because of that you will get some difference value here this difference value is referred to as what it is referred to as what error am i right this error indicates there is some difference between reference input and the actual output eventually this error should reduce to zero or practically we will say that error should be minimum so i hope you understood that why h of s should be equal to 1 because if h of s is not equal to 1 then the actual output will not be compared with reference input in fact some scaled actual output will be taken am i right so now you have understood the reason why we believe that it should be negative feedback and second reason why h of s should be equal to 1 so with this discussion now we will understand what is meant by type and what is meant by order of system
so type and order output systems are valid only and only when there is a unity feedback so when i say unity feedback it means h of s should be equal to what one so what we have in general over here is g of s what we have in this block is generally h of s and let's say if i'm looping through g of s and h of s it appears that there is a cascade connection between g of s and h of s that is nothing but output of g of s acts as input of h of s so in general we have this block over here and this block is called as what h of s so since g of s and h of s are having a cascade connection i can take a product of it so it is g of s into what h of s obviously since h of s equal to 1 i can equate it to g of s and let me tell you this product of g of s and h of s is considered to be a loop gain so this is considered as what a loop gain so let me tell you first of all h of s should be equal to 1 and only then i can say that g of s into h of s is always g of s and it is considered to be a loop gain and if the loop gain is known to me i can determine what is been by type of system and what is been by order of system when i'm saying type of system and order of system answer is always a numerical that is type 0 type 1 type 2 or let's say first order system second order system third order system and so on so what i'll do is i'll take some examples of loop gain so i'll give you some expression of loop gain in terms of s and from this we will try to identify what is meant by type and what is meant by order So from this given sets of loop gains, we have to identify what is meant by type and what is meant by order. So first of all, let me define what is meant by type of system. Type of system indicates number of poles present at origin. I repeat, type of the system defines number of poles at origin for a given loop gain. So you have to see how many poles are present at origin and that indicates a type number. So let me just write it over here. I hope you understood what is meant by type of system. And when I'm saying order, order is always equal to highest power of S in the denominator for a given loop gain. I repeat, order of the system is nothing but highest power of S in the denominator of the given loop gain. So I would say, it is highest power of s in the denominator so let us summarize for a very first problem we will see what is type so if you look at the denominator you can equate denominator to zero see first pole you are getting s equal to minus two the second pole you are getting at minus three so you see there is absolutely no pole at origin or i can say that there are zero poles at origin and since there are zero poles at origin i would say type is equal to zero then we will see what is meant by order order indicates highest power of s in the denominator so if you actually multiply these two bracket you'll get highest power of s equal to two therefore order equal to two so for the first problem type equal to zero and order equal to two please don't forget that our discussion is valid only and only if h of s equal to 1. Please don't forget that h of s must be equal to 1. So in case in the exam, if you appear for this problem and if h of s is not equal to 1, you cannot just blindly say what is type and what is meant by order. In that case, first of all, you have to convert non-unity feedback to unity feedback. Somehow, how to make it, I'll make you understand while solving the problems on the same. Next example, so one thing is for sure, for looking at type and order, you have to only worry about denominator and you have to completely ignore what numerator says. So in the denominator, when you equate denominator to zero, you get only one pole at origin. As you can see, you have only one pole at origin and I would say that therefore type equal to one because type indicates number of poles at origin for a given loop gain that is G of S, H of S. And if you look at the order that is after multiplying this whole 
you will get order equal to 3. That is highest power of S you will find equal to 3. Last. So better you pause the video, you identify what is type, what is order and then try to match with me. So when you equate denominator equal to 0, you will get two poles at origin because of S square. So there are two poles at origin. So type is equal to 2. Whereas if you multiply this whole, you will get order equal to 4. That is highest power of S in the denominator. I hope now you have understood what is meant by type of system, what is meant by order of system. Let's move ahead and let us understand what are standard test inputs. So even in last chapter, we have already seen this topic. But then to really start with the time domain analysis, I believe that we should actually revise this and then we should start with the next video. So standard test inputs are those inputs which basically used to test the performance of the system or to see how system behaves for a particular input. Am I right? So the first standard test input that we should know about an unit impulse. So unit impulse is basically designated as del of t. We know that del of t is always 1 for t equal to 0 and it is equal to 0 when t is not equal to 0. Basically, we give unit impulse input to a system just to see how it behaves when suddenly some input is given even for a short duration. So how system behaves for such input, we use this unit impulse input and we have also seen the Laplace transform of del of t is always 1. So we should know this. Second input that we have seen is unit step. Unit step input is designated as u of t. We know that this u of t is always 1 for t greater than 0 and it is always 0 for t less than 0. Graphically I can show this u of t like this. Even graphical representation of del of t is already known to you. So it is always 1 at t equal to 0. This 1 indicates it is area. Magnitude wise it is of course infinity. And we have seen that u of t in time domain but in Laplace domain it is designated as 1 upon s. And one more input we see that a unit ramp input. This unit ramp input is actually t dot u of t but we don't write this as t dot u of t. We designate this with another symbol r of t. So this is r of t with respect to what time? This is 0. If it is unit ramp, it indicates slope value is equal to 1. If slope value is not equal to 1, then it is not called as unit ramp. Then it is only called as a ramp input with a specified slope. So we see that r of t is always t for t greater than or equal to 0 and it is always 0 for t less than 0. And for r of t, it is in time domain but in Laplace domain or a Laplace transform of r of t is 1 upon s square. So you should know this that is how they look in time domain, what are their specifications in time domain and what happens when a Laplace transform of the same inputs are taken. So these are standard test inputs. One more thing I want to remind you something. Let's say we have del of t as input for a particular system. Then we have the output called as impulse response. Because since input is impulse, output is also called as what? Response. But response given to impulse known as impulse output or impulse response. So output is known as impulse response. I hope you understood this and we believe that this is not only system but a LTI system that is linear time invariant system. Let's say if I have applied another input u of t and I want to know what is meant by a unit step response. So once again to the same system I am applying this u of t this time and I want to know what is unit step response provided 
impulse response is already known to me so if impulse response is already known to you you don't have to really apply u of t and then to see what is unit step response what i meant let me just clear try to understand that in step number 1 you have applied del of t in step number 2 you have observed impulse response in step number 3 you want to know if u of t is applied to this lti system what is unit step response i hope the question is clear in step number 1 we have applied del of t in step number 2 we have observed what is output and output is known as impulse response that is response given to impulse input therefore known as impulse response third i want to know what if u of t is applied what will be the output in that case so we know that after integrating del of t you get u of t so this is relation between what input if there is some relation between input the same relation is applicable to output also in that case in that case i can say that a unit step response is simply an integration of impulse response with respect to time so if it is lti system and if there is some relation between two inputs same relation is applicable to their respective outputs so since u of t is integration of del of t therefore we will say that unit step response is nothing but integration of impulse response i hope you understood this now for example if we take another input that is r of t what is r of t r of t is called as what ramp input and now if i have applied to same system and i want to know what is the output so output is known as let's say unit ramp response this is unit ramp response i want to know what is meant by unit ramp response let me tell you again if you integrate u of t you will get r of t. so i would say that r of t is nothing but integration of u of t so let's say if unit step response is already known to me and i want to know what is unit ramp response then unit ramp response it simply integration of unit step response i hope you understood this it is in fact we have already studied okay it is just i'm revising once again if you don't again understand this then i would request that you see a previous video carefully there i have taken examples on the same issue so let me just clear it out once again let's say i have applied u of t for which unit step response is already known to me once again i have applied u of t to lti system and unit step response is already known to me and let's say i want the response for a ramp input this is nothing but a unit ramp input for which i want to know what is our unit ramp response then what we say since u of t and r of t we know the relation so between these two inputs what is the relation relation is ramp input is always integration of step input if ramp input is integration of unit step then the same relation is applicable to their respective outputs that is unit ramp response we get by integrating unit step response therefore we got this relation i hope now you have understood these relations understanding each and everything that i have taught in this lecture is very very important because the next lecture will have the link in fact it would be an extension to the same discussion thank you